Good morning from Yami Bay TV. Wishing you all well, sending loads of love to you as usual. Right, we're going to go straight in this morning. What a surprise, right? I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I was on the bus last Thursday. I was sitting on the upper deck. To my right was a face, right? I looked over. No, 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 no. You're seeing things, Yami. You know I've got a good memory. And some people's faces change and but their eyes always remain the same. So he looked at me. I looked at him. Put my head down. I said, is it or isn't it? Then I looked at him again. And he looked at me. He looks me right in the eye, right? So I looked away. And I've done my old one from way back in the day. I went like this. Kenneth Erskine. He looked at me. Do you know what he said? Are you Sammy? I said, yeah, I am. I said, what are you doing now? <laughs> For those that don't know, right, Kenneth Erskine got convicted of a couple of murders, serial rapists of old age pensioners. Some disgraceful behaviour, which he certainly got a life sentence uh, with a tap. He ended up in a uh, mental institution, right? They knocked down the, something to do with his tariff or something. I can't remember the real particulars, but I know he, something happened on appeal where he got something dropped Right, amazingly so. Right, so we get to the question, how is it that he could be out? <laughs> how could we be out? All right, it's quite possible they could still be in a mental institution and be on home leaves, etc., etc. But hold on, you didn't have an escort with you. I know how the thing works. Now, how is it he can be out, but Charlie Bronson can't be out? We can think about people like Slaney, Shane Scotland, the, the many, many men that are still suffering and they have gone past their tariffs who are going to be labelled deemed unsuitable because you've got a young psychologist, 25, who's just come out of university, who does all the uh, behaviour stuff and courses and everything. How does a man, right, get over and come to see the errors of his ways? for such horrific crimes as murders and rapes of old people. What kind of courses, how does that mean, how can that risk be managed in the community? We can safely say that we believe that the chances of reoffending is blah, blah, blah. What has he done in there to prove that he wouldn't be able to do that? What, a couple of courses? I remember him from the YPs, you know. Um, Alio, he offered Alio out one time, right? Alio, rough mate from South London, he offered him out. Alio was walking towards the door and he pushed the door shut <laughs> after calling it on. So I already know that you're a coward anyway. You know, I mean, you could do all that to old and vulnerable with cowardly behaviour, with horrific, horrific um, seriousness, too graphic to go into. But it's you. You're out, right? Probably got a new name. The police know he's out. But hold it a minute. No one's reported it. <laughs> so no one reports it because, you know, we don't want to we've got to keep him safe we don't want to put him at risk uh he's done his time and we believe that no i don't think you can ever ever get over doing such serious things you can't do that's in you you can't i used to struggle to get out <laughs> <laughs> they used to sit on boards and say, yeah, it was, this is risk, it's criminal history and all that kind of stuff. Bloody hell, man, my crimes weren't like that. You know what I mean? But somehow he gets to, he gets to slip through to live a life outside where loads of people have lost their mums, their grandmothers and will never feel the same again. If you get what I mean, we know what we're talking about here. Look at the loss in that. It's not, it's not something where he was under threat or he was in a vulnerable position where he had to fight back. And that, this is fueled by sexual desires, preying on older people, some of your warped sense of being that you get some kind of kicks and frills out of or your power of control when it's really easy for you to do that kind of thing, not that doing it anyway like that for any age is right whatsoever, right? How do you, how do you amend that? Well, you've done a course, obviously, where they've analysed your behaviour towards older women. That's what you'll come with. Older people, right? So you, would, you, you, you he would have to have been deemed to have seen the error of his ways with the crimes that he committed against older people. 
So he realises, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that to older people. It's not really good to do all that. Uh, I see it now, and I've, I've, you know, he's passed all the all the all the tests in there, and you get a chance uh, that many of your victims and victims' families will never ever get to rest in peace at the horrible ending, at life's bitter end for older people uh, that you should take away uh, that little crowning glory for them to have reached that grand old age and to live their life. Um, probably the way that they always lived it, as decent human beings and not like people like me who were habitual criminals during that life. I looked into his eyes. It doesn't look like to me. It, you know what? If he reoffends, we're going to find out. I'm telling you, mate, it is an absolute liberty and a travesty to those victims that he should get a chance at normal life. But Charlie is in there where his risk is only when he's around the prison officers down in a special unit, not outside. You ain't even tested him outside yet. Really, really damning, isn't it? Really, Charlie's going to throw the book in at that open parole hearing. Uncle Yami knows this. He's got to win, otherwise he's not going to get out. He's going to lift a lid on everything. He is throwing in the kitchen sink, right? That's why it's going to be an open hearing. Charlie's smart like that, right? The other thing I forgot to tell you, I interviewed Sarah Jane Baker. It was too graphic. She went absolutely mad. <laughs> she was talking to me. I have to protect her mental health for this stage now. I'm going to redo it professionally and ask the questions. But, you know, I've got to protect her mental health. Uh, and our own well-being with our campaign, you know, for trans and that kind of stuff. Not so much. You know, Uncle Yami has to look at it, I've got to protect her. You can't be going up there saying, no, oh, he's that, that, that. She's got some points, so I'm going to hold on to the video because one day I might expose it. And she, everything she seemed to say was true. Uh, but a lot of big names, they did look out for her. You know what I mean? So those bits in it don't really need to be changed. I would have thrown it up. But what for? to put it up there so that we could all, you know, we, we love a bit of drama and gossip and everything, but I can't, I can't put her in that kind of danger. So Uncle Yami's going to redo that. I've got an Xboxer to do, he's on the comeback trail next week. Um, another one, um, some brothers down in Acton as well, um, that were in the game, turned their lives around a little bit. And hopefully um, some other, um, well, definitely coming soon. We'll be having them up regularly, those interviews. But um, sending so a lot of love, and let me go and get some breakfast. Uh, doing a bit of training now. Yeah. Yum, look at that. Mm. <clears throat> Uncle Yabby's on the comeback trail, right? So I've done my run this morning, but I will be up very, very shortly. But imagine that. You've got men roasting and dying in there that are way over their tavis, but you could let out. People like that. Sending loads of love. Be up very, very soon.